Many consider it to be the ultimate corporate extravagance. A private jet. Would you believe now may be exactly the right time to use the more, not less? That may not be as crazy as it sounds when Street Signs on CNBC comes in for a landing. All right, we're back. For most of you, or anyone for that matter, the idea of flying in a private jet is a chance to uh, live the good life. But in corporate America, jetting around in private planes is pretty common. Companies of all sizes. But in this economic climate, there are calls to ground corporate America, or at least make it fly commercial. With us to debate the issue, Barry Labov, CEO of, and I love this name, Labov and Beyond. <laughs> They're an advertising firm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He joins us from his company's jet to really stick it to us at <laughs> Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. Chuck Collins is also with us, co-author of High Flyers, a private jet travel is straining the system, warming the planet, and costing you a lot of money. All right, Chuck, make your case. Well, I think that the rise in private jets is not good for shareholders, taxpayers. It's certainly not good for the environment. And I think what we've seen is a corporate luxurious perk become a necessity in a very short period of time. So uh, I would, I'm mostly concerned that we as taxpayers and shareholders have to subsidize this sector when I think the future, jobs of the future, are going to be in creating a better transportation system that everybody can use, not just the high flyers. Chuck, i got to tell you, I mean, if, I, if I'm a shareholder, I don't want my CEO going through uh, security checks in an airport for two hours. I well, want I him on a plane. I want him moving. I want him working. Yep, and I think it, then the question is how many other top managers are also in those private jets? How many other uh, employees? Again, it's, it's in, a, in a very short time, in two decades, the number of private jets has increased tenfold. Uh, and I wouldn't feel so bad about it if I also, as a taxpayer, didn't have to subsidize the air transit system as a commercial flyer. I end up having to pay fees. You know, the uh, uh, private aviation, the private jets, use about 16% of the air traffic system and pay about 3% of the costs. Uh, and right, they have this Godzilla, give... Godzilla size carbon footprint. So for the rest of us who are trying to save energy, it's a no-brainer. This is a big waste. You know, Barry, I don't, want, I don't want my CEO to be wasting his time in airport security at the same time. I don't want him killing off the planet either. Well, I, I think, Chuck, I appreciate your passion on all of this, and I, and I agree. I think we all want to save the environment, and we want to do what's right for the economy. I look at my business jet not as a luxury. I brought today, for instance, five people from my company. They're in New York City doing two different jobs right now today. Uh, I'm here doing this interview. We're going to go back later, drop them off in two different cities. I'll be able to land in Fort Wayne, Indiana, be able to see my son pitch in his Little League game. And at the same time, it was $3,000 cheaper than a commercial flight for all of us. So I think, there, I think there's a lot of room to look at what's good about business aviation. But would you, would you not at least concede Chuck's point about the carbon footprint? It's huge. Well, I look at the MBAA and their no plane, no gain site, and they have a lot of information on that. I can only talk as a business owner. And what I'm looking at is I fly from small airplanes or small airports to small airports. Um, we are able to be very economical and save a lot of fuel when we do it. And I'm trying to bring jobs in the Fort Wayne, Indiana, and then the Auburn Hills, Michigan. Yeah, I think Barry has a good point about the efficiencies there. I mean, I would I would like to have private aviation, private jets in particular, the big the big the big planes, pay their fair share of the air traffic costs, so I don't have to subsidize them. I'd like to see. I'd like to not have to pitch in and pay for airports in like North Bend, Oregon, where 5,000 golfers come in to in their private jets to play golf. Uh, that's not how my ticket air traffic contr contribution to the air traffic system. I wouldn't like to see that. I also like to see some. You know, most people in the public have no idea that private jet travelers have no security. They don't go through any form of security. Uh, they don't have to stand in line and give up yeah. their water bottle and their, you know, have their lotion. Take off their shoes. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the private jet lobby has fought. You know, after 9-11, a lot of us in the commercial flyers, we'd like to have a more efficient system, too. The commercial flyers 
have made enormous sacrifices for security, and the private jet lobby has fought so that the private jet flyers have no conditions. I mean, I've been on a private jet, and it is a perk. It's a luxurious experience. Sounds good. And to I would me. like to get home to my kids' sporting events too. But you know, the fact is, uh, private jet people drive up to their plane. They can carry on whatever they want. They can bring their friends on. That maybe they're on the watch list. Maybe they're not. Nobody knows. Okay, and Chuck. I'm sorry, but we are out of time. I got to cut you off there. Chuck Collins, thank you very much. Barry Thanks, Mark. above.